in early July of 2010. A day out at Dixieland in theme park in Baton Rouge ended in a disaster as a woman was thrown off a roller coaster and was sent plummeting to the ground below. In the months that followed, officials then spent countless hours investigating the tragic incident. What happened to Lindsay and how did she manage to slip out of the ride? This is the story of the extreme roller coaster disaster. Lindsay Zeno was born to parents George and Karen in Lafayette, Louisiana on the 19th of October, 1988. When she was young, she attended Northside High School before moving on to Remington College where she graduated in phlebotomy with honors. Her family was very tight knit and her nickname was Meek. She was known for her love of cooking, styling her friend's hair and just being a great person all around. At the time of the incident, Lindsay was working for a company called Transcom, who specialise in customer service. On Sunday the 11th of July 2010, Lindsay, along with her friends, were visiting Dixie Landing Amusement Park located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Dixie Landing was built in 1999 and has a variety of different rides catering to people of all ages, from children and thrill seekers alike. The park is on the smaller side, with only 27 rides and attractions. One of these rides included the Extreme Roller Coaster, not to be confused with the Extreme Sizzler ride from the previous video. At the time, it was one of the most popular rides in the park and was engineered and manufactured in Germany 10 years earlier. The ride is made up of cars. Each car sits four people, two facing the front and two facing the back. The ride roughly lasts a minute and a half and goes up to 37 miles per hour. The car spins as it speeds around the track. Lindsay boarded the ride with her two friends. Her friends were sat behind her and she was sat in front in a car on her own. The only restraint on the ride is a bar that fits in between the rider's legs and is designed to hold the rider in position. It was around 4pm when the group boarded the ride. As the ride went on, Lindsay was seen struggling with a lap restraint. One witness stated, the thing that goes over your chest came up and she was trying to put it down, pull it back over her. When she made that turn, I guess she couldn't pull it over her because next thing you know, she was hitting the ground. In the blink of an eye, Lindsay plummeted 30 feet to the ground, the equivalent of falling three stories. Lindsay's friends had no idea that she had fallen out until they got to the end of the ride. One of them said, I turned around and looked and I screamed. We both screamed. I knew the ride was over and she wasn't there. Lindsay was quickly transported to hospital where she was pronounced dead. Our top story this morning, very sad, a tragedy at a local amusement park. Yeah, a 21-year-old woman is dead after just a, a horrible accident. WFP's Greg Merriweather has more on this morning's creepy. He joins us now live for the very latest. Greg, good morning. Good morning to you, Matt. This morning, we expect uh, state investigators to be out here and uh, examining the uh, ride that uh, caused this uh, terrible accident. It's called the Extreme Roller Coaster, and uh, Brandon will uh, zoom into it. Now, it's not the white uh, roller coaster you see there. It's literally the one that's uh, behind the uh, sign there that's uh, lit up. According to deputies, the woman, uh, Lindsay Zeno, was killed yesterday afternoon when she apparently uh, fell from the roller coaster here at Dixie Landing. According to the East Baton Rouge Parish Coroner, Lindsay died from multi-system trauma. He followed up what this meant by saying it was one of several injuries that could have killed her after she fell. An investigation was launched. Just before we get into the findings of the investigation, it is important to note that a few weeks before the incident, another girl had complained about problems with a restraint. She claimed that before the ride took off, she complained to the ride operator that a restraint was loose so he did something special to get it locked. The ride operator joked with her saying, if the ride flipped over and unlocked, they should just put their hands in the air as gravity would hold them in place. State Fire Marshal Butch Browning says cars on the extreme ride four people, two pairs sitting back to back. Two people were behind Zeno who was sitting by herself. So no one really saw 
What happened? Right now, we can't find anything on the ride that, that failed. There's no visible signs of failure. There's no visible signs of anything that didn't work properly. What we do know is, is this woman fell out of the ride. In the few months after the incident, officials examined the ride, the restraint, electricals, and human elements. But they found that no exact cause could be determined, which meant no one was blamed. They interviewed both ride operators, who both recalled checking her restraints and claimed that they had been down. They also found no problems with the ride itself. According to them, all standards were met. Dixie Landon released a statement following this saying, We have fully cooperated with the Louisiana State Fire Marshal's office throughout their investigation. We have been advised that there were no problems or issues with the way Dixie Landing personnel operated and maintained the ride. The fire marshal stated, Obviously, we can never know precisely what actions Lindsay may have taken once the car left the loading point because she was killed in the accident. That would be important information which would ultimately help us understand what happened. The marshals also said that the ride had to be updated with more safety restraints. Sadly, there really wasn't a lot of information on the aftermath of this case. It took a lot of digging to find the information in the first place. I know Lindsay's family tried to sue the park for wrongful death, but I'm guessing with the investigation findings, this didn't go anywhere. I found one main theory in the case, which many people believed at the time. It was claimed that the ride operators never restrained her properly due to her being overweight. When the ride set off, it came undone, but again, it was never proved. Lindsay was laid to rest at the Fountain Memorial Funeral Home on July the 17th, 2010. She was only 21 years old. Her friend who was on the ride said she will always hold on to the memories of her friend and spends her day fighting back the tears. Her aunt said her life was cut short in just a twinkle of an eye. Her last hours were happy, so we can take some comfort in knowing that she was happy. If anyone has any updates on how the family are, or if they won the case, please leave it below and I will pin the comment to the top. As always, thanks for watching.